Beginning on our backs, place your ring between your inner knees. Rest your arms down by your side, turn your palms open. Settle onto the roller so that the base of your spine, almost the base, the sacrum, right? The base is your tailbone, your coccyx, but your sacrum all the way up your spine to the top back of your head is on the roller. Let's take a couple of really awesome exhales. If, if you're able, open your mouth and sigh it out loud. As you take those exhales, let your rib cage descend. On an exhale, the ribs will descend back towards the back body and down towards the pelvis. That downward movement actually happens from the top of the ribs, but where we mostly feel it is the base of the ribs. Take two more breaths. Just let your exhales come out. If you want to forcefully exhale to let the ribs settle or if they're already settled, just notice the exhale. Open mouth, exhale, inhale through the nose. All right, let's add in a little movement now with the legs. So on exhales, squeeze the ring. On the in breath, just take the pressure off the ring a little bit. Keep it going. You don't have to rush through these. You know, let them be nice and slow. It's not about quantity. It's about the quality of the movement. And particularly, I know it's easy to squeeze it, right? That's so easy to squeeze. Can you taper out the release of it so that you're not just bouncing back out to legs, um, legs without as much pressure on the ring? You're actually feeling the legs kind of calibrate off of engaging. Two more times. Focusing on the release of the ring and controlling that, making it smooth and even on both legs. Finish on this next one. Reach for your weighted objects. Take hold of them in your hands. Turn your palms up to the sky and let the head of your arm bones sink back to the earth. Use an exhale, take a little bit of pressure onto the ring. Not tight squeeze, just a little squeeze. On an in-breath, reach your arms up to the ceiling. Exhale your arms down. So these are just lower lifts. Keep letting the head of the arm bones sink back to the earth so that your front of your chest stays open. You have about three to four more. Try not to rush through them. Okay, let's emphasize the lowering of the arm. So lifting up, we're used to using muscle, right? To lift an arm up, control the deceleration of the arm coming down. The next time your arm is down by your side, turn your palms open. Inhale, open your arms out into the side plane into a T shape. Exhale your arms into your side body. Keep breathing. Inhale, open. Exhale, arms come towards your torso. Go back and monitor what the legs are doing. How are you doing holding the ring? Is there still a very slight squeeze or did you give up on that and just hold the ring, right? So go back to an even pressure of both legs. And when you do that, you'll feel the inner line of the leg lightly engage. Maybe you'll even feel the pelvic floor dome up. Those would be, you know, kind of interesting things. The next time your arms are out in a T, let's hug a tree, elbows round. Opening to the T, exhaling to round the arms and bring your hands towards each other, never touching. And once again, go back to the legs and the feet. Spread your toes out. Weight your feet evenly as the arms keep moving and you keep breathing. How about one more arm open and close? We'll put the last two moves together. When your arms are out into the side plane, bring them down towards your pelvis. Inhale, open the arms out to a T. Exhale, round your arms, hug your tree. Keep that going, go back into your legs. Yeah, what happened down there? What happened? Did you give up on the very light squeeze of both legs holding the ring with a smidgen of pressure? 
So there's a difference between just holding the ring, right? And not really adding a little squeeze. And, and I mean a little, little squeeze. And, um, you know, kind of doing nothing at all down there. So we want a little, little squeeze down there that's even on both legs. One more time from snow angel to hug a tree. When you finish with your arms down by your side, check back in with your legs and we'll make arm circles straight up towards the ceiling. Arms circle around and out and come in. Keep it going, breathe with it. Inhale, raise your arms up to the sky. Exhale, circle your arms out into the side plane, bring them into your side body. Keep letting the head of your arm bones drip towards the earth. Allow the weight that you're holding in your hands to move out of the hands, right? So you're not trying to push the weight up. The weight is actually moving down your arms and into your trunk. See if you can feel that as you make the range of motion on these next two. Breathe with it. So it's an inhale up and exhale down and around. Here's the last one. Bring your arms into your side body bicep curl here. So elbows are not on the floor. Elbows are off the ground about the height of your rib cage, bending and extending the arms, palms facing one another. So this would be called a hammer curl, you know, with the palms facing one another. We'll change the rotation in a minute. Finish on this bicep curl, extend your arms, rotate your palms down to the ground. This gets weird. And now bicep curl here, palms are facing down. Yeah, breathe, relax the head of the arm bones, wiggle the jaw. One more, keep the arms long, rotate your palms so your palms go to the ceiling, bicep curl here. Breathe, so you've just done three rotations for the forearm and added a bicep curl. Here's your last bicep curl. Bend your elbows, bring your elbows out wide. So your elbows are bent, elbows are wide, elbows are in the side plane. Take your hands down, stack them right above your elbows so your arms look kind of like goal posts. So your arms look like goal posts. On an in-breath, press your arms up to the sky. So this would be like a chest press. And then exhale your elbows down to the ground. Check back in with the legs, how you doing? Are both legs giving an equal squeeze or you only have that one dominant leg doing all the work? Keep it going. You have two more chest presses with elbows as they bend, going lower than your roller, maybe you know, pretty darn close to the earth. Here's your last one, breathing with it, right? So one part of the movement's the in-breath, one part's the exhale. Once your elbows are down, tuck your elbows into your side, extend your arms and rest your arms on the ground. Arms are down by your side, let go of your weights. On an exhale, lift your heels up. Your hands are down, your hands are helping balance. Could it just be your whole hand down? Yeah, and it could even be your upper, I mean, sorry, your lower arm from elbow to wrist. You could also float the forearms up. You could change the position of the hand to make it harder. You could try back of the hand or pinky edge of the hand, which is the hardest. That's the knife edge hand. Breathe. And now for all of us, let's reach from armpit to middle finger, whatever we've chosen. With the heels lifted, don't take the toes off yet. Just start making the toes lighter and see if you can feel the legs starting to be received by center. You'll feel the belly tone up. All right. Check in with the shoulder girdle. We're going super slow. Go check in with the shoulder girdle. Is it starting to like grip up and yank forward? Take an exhale, wiggle, soften it, let it settle. Breathe. On your biggest exhale, open your mouth, blow out, lift your feet up. Legs come up to tabletop. Squeeze your ring on every exhale now. We're not in any hurry to get this done. Again, we're back after feeling both legs squeeze to the midline. Keep breathing. Legs in the air at tabletop. Squeeze of the ring on exhales. Sweet reach from armpit to middle finger while the head of the arm bones move back and the shoulder girdle, the neck, the jaw 
stays out of it. <laughs> no tension, no gripping up there. Here's your last squeeze. Breathe. See if you can take your hand, just pick one of them and move the ring to the inner ankle. So we've shifted the ring from inner knee to inner ankle and then extend your legs up to the sky. We'll just bend and extend at the knees here with the ring at the inner ankle. If you've had any sort of uh, balance issue with the roller making that transition, you got plenty of time to get back in the saddle, so don't, don't worry, breathe. Two more, knee bend, leg extend. Let's keep the legs extended. In the ankle joint of both legs, it's something between a point and a flex. It's like a pointed foot. It's not flex, it's not pointed, it's just there, halfway between the two. How do the arm bones go back? Check your hand position. Which one do you want? Reach from armpit to middle finger. Check in with the neck and shoulders. On exhale, squeeze the ring. Each leg equally squeezing, breathe. Three more. Last one. Bend your knees, reach up with a hand, grab the ring, take it out. Come back to tabletop with the legs and then on an exhale, take your time one foot at a time down. Switch your ring to the base of your skull. There's a spongy part on the inside of the ring. Use the spongy part on the inside of the ring to cup your skull. Make sure you're not on your vertebra, that you're clearly on your skull. And once you've got your skull cupped, rest your head back down on the roller. Tuck your elbows in. Breathe in, and as you exhale, curl up. You're just curling up head, neck, and shoulders. So work in the top half now with flexion. We have four more. Really sweet exhale out as you Take your eyes over your nose. You want to follow like a trajectory of eyes over the nose, nose over the chin. Chin comes up over the chest. That's the curl, this kind of arcing curl you're going through. Stay up on your next one. Let's pulse here. Keep using the ring to lengthen through the top back of your head. Percussive breath as you pulse this flexion. So it's Two more. Stay up, rotate right, pulse right four. Inhale center, rotate left, pulse left four. In breath center, exhale, rest back down. Take the ring off your head, just set it off. We'll use it again in a moment. From the bottom half of you, right, from pelvis, Tuck your tail, return your pelvis to neutral. Tuck your tail, return your pelvis to neutral. So what's neutral pelvis? It's where pubic bone and frontal hip bones are in the same plane. A couple more times, you know when you tuck your tail, you'll feel your low back press down. When your pelvis goes to neutral, you might feel, I don't know, just a little bit of the lumbar is off the roller but the ribs are definitely on the roller. And if your ribs aren't on the roller, you've got to exhale really big. All right, last pelvic rock. Reach out through your arms again. Remember, you've got your choices in your hand positions. Widen through your collarbone and let the head of the arm bone settle back. As you keep the reach from armpit to middle finger, stand in your left foot, draw your right knee towards your chest, stretch your right leg up to the sky, Point and flex out of your right ankle. One more point and flex. Ankle circle. Reverse the direction of the ankle circle. Hold steady, bend your knee. Return your right foot to the floor. Left knee to chest. Left leg reaches up to the sky. From the left ankle, point and flex. Breathe. Ankle circle. Reverse. Hold steady, fold your left knee, place your left foot on the ground. 
Check in with the shoulder girdle. Return to the extension from the armpit to the middle finger as you open your hands up. Push with your left foot, right leg to tabletop. Stretch your right leg up to the sky. Point out of the right ankle. Lower your right leg towards the earth. Flex at the right ankle. Lift your right leg up. Point, lower, flex, lift. Breathe with it. One more time, point to lower, flex to lift. Keep your leg up to the sky, add a point in at the ankle, draw a little circle with your whole leg, about the size of, uh, let's say a tennis ball. Reverse the direction of your circle. The circle you're drawing with your big toe is about the size of a tennis ball. The origination of the movement is from the ball in the socket of your femur. Hold your leg steady. Bend your right knee, right foot to the ground. Stand on your right foot, breathe. Take a really awesome exhale. Let the tension in the neck, shoulders completely dissipate. Good luck with that, right? You have to keep monitoring that the whole class. <laughs> All right, stepping down with your right foot, left knee into your chest, stretch your left leg up long, breathe. Lower the left leg on a point, flex at the left ankle, lift your left leg up. Keep that going, point to lower, flex to lift. If you could use the exhale to lower your leg, that would be super sweet. But if you're like, look, I'm breathing, that's all, I just got that, just keep breathing. You can sink the exhale to lower, that would be like an extra, and in breath to raise the leg. One more. The next time your leg's up in the air, go back to a point with your big toe, draw a tennis ball size circle. You know that this circle is originating up, way up where the pelvis and the leg meet together in the hip joint, reverse the direction. You know that's a ball and socket joint. <laughs> it's got a funny angle coming in. You can picture what the ball is doing in the socket. It's bonus points, most people like just getting that angle of how the femur comes into the socket through like an L shape kind of sorta. It's not a 90 degree turn, it's got an angle to it. But we'll say it's 90, but it's not. Hold steady, bend your left knee, return your left foot to the floor, breathe. All right, open your arms out to a T. Let's just turn the palms open and have a really sweet front of the chest opener. If you get any sort of tingling, or numbness through the armpit, chest, or the hand, change the arms. Standing on your left foot, lift your right heel up, then lift your right toes barely off the ground. Put your toes down, put your right heel down, lift the left heel, lift the left toes up. Left toes down, left heel down. So it's heel lift, toe lift, toe down, heel down. Heel lift, alternating sides, toes up, Toes down, heel down. Really small lift when you go to lift the leg up. And listen when you go to lift the leg up, right? When you go to hover those toes off the ground, what happens in the neck and shoulders? And your, your objective is not much, right? The goal would be eh, not much, right? But what's happening at center, can you feel, you know, how the leg is being held and the strength of center to hold the leg in that little hover off the ground with the toes. How about one more teeny tiny march here? And we'll make them bigger in just a moment. So when you're even on both sides, breathe. On the next exhale, let's raise your right leg to tabletop. Next breath, second leg up. So you got both legs up in tabletop. You are welcome to change your arm position to anything that's gonna work, as long as you don't have a lot of grip or strain or actually you're working for no zero, grip or strain through the neck and shoulders, breathe, breathe, that'll help. All right, from the hip joint, not the knee joint, not the ankle joint, from the hip joint, right toes to the ground. They don't have to touch, right leg only, two more times, so it's a total of three. The hinging movement is from the hip joint. Here's your last one, breathe. 
All right, that's a lot of center work, right? Okay, soften, take a nice exhale. Here we go, second side, left leg from the hip joint, three lower lifts. The foot's going to the ground, but the mover is the hip joint. Foot doesn't have to hit the ground. You work in the range that's right for you. It's just a directional cue. Next time your left leg is up, let's alternate right, left. Try to stay super clean in this movement, super clean with breath and um, an honesty that you're moving from the hip, not closing the knee, not changing the foot to get down there. So it's okay, it's 100% okay if you don't touch the ground. You can hear my voice getting shaky because man, this is like core work, right? Breathe, these are marches, toe taps with toes coming down. All right, finish on your even side when you're right, left, even, breathe. And then flex at the ankles. Ooh, now we got ankles flexed, meaning they're gonna be heel beats. A little harder, breathe. Lower the right leg to the ground using the movement from the hip joint and the heels coming to the ground. So if you found toe taps easy, you've just shortened the lever, right? So you have a longer reach coming from the hip joint, coming from center, because we don't have the length of the foot anymore, right? From the pointed foot, we don't have that length to get to the ground. Keep going. So what you've got to monitor now is that you're not trying to close the knee joint to bring the heel towards the earth. You're still moving from the hip joint and it will be big work at center. All right, I'm about done with this. I don't know about you guys, but this is a doozy. All right. <laughs> when you're even on both sides, oh, just make some ankle circles. Breathe, and then let's put left leg down first. Left leg down, and then right leg down, both feet down. Just breathe. Stretch your right leg out across the earth. Flex at the right ankle. Spread your right toes. Left knee still bent. Right leg is extended. Just getting a little stretch through the front of the pelvis. All right, and then slide your right foot in, drag it across the earth, land standing on your right foot, stretch your left leg out, breathe. All right, slide your left foot in. Pick a side, slide off your roller and lay on your back. Just push your roller out. Take a moment, stretch both legs out, bring your arms down by your side. You can even close your eyes for these next two to three breath cycles. And enjoy, enjoy this sensation of resting back, of your ability to feel the back of you. You, you have this awareness now of your back body. Notice the width of your back body, how much of you you feel on the floor. Do you feel your pelvis? Do you feel your ribs? Your mid back, your upper back, your shoulders, your skull? Can you feel all of that on the floor? So often we just don't even feel our back, you know? That's why people put stickers on our back that say, kick me. <laughs> we didn't even know they put a joke on us. All right, draw your knees to your chest. Pick a side to roll to. I'm avoiding a mic box and come up. Let's grab the roller, put it perpendicular to us. Um, we're going back down. We're just gonna put the roller underneath our pelvis. Have your ring ready. I guess my ring's really not ready that far away. All right, so laying back down, lift your pelvis up, slide the roller underneath your pelvis so you're in a bridge shape with the roller underneath you. Confirm that the roller's pretty even on both sides of you. So um, if you measured from like the sides of your pelvis out to the roller, it's about the same distance, right? So you don't have a bunch of roller to one side. Take hold of your ring. Let's place it in the hands. Open your hands up. So you're not holding the ring with a closed hand. You're holding the ring with an open hand with fingers pointing to the sky. Soften your elbows and let the weight that you're holding sink down into your arms. So the head of your arm bones actually move into the earth. On exhales, let's squeeze the ring. Ooh, that's nice. Elbows stay a little soft. 
So you're not hyperextending through the elbow to get the squeeze. It doesn't have to be a big squeeze, right? If you use the squeeze and the exhale combined, you're gonna feel a toning, like almost like a lengthening toning through the belly area, right? It's like a, running a line from your pubic bone up towards your xiphoid process, which is that triangular bone where the rib cage meets at the base of the sternum. Couple more little squeezes. All right, keep a slight squeeze, rotate the ring. So you're keeping a squeeze and rotating the ring. One more rotation in each direction. Check in with your pelvis that you're equally waiting. In breath, extend your arms over your head, squeeze the ring, raise the arms up to the ceiling, squeeze the ring. Inhale, arms overhead, squeeze the ring, arms back to the ceiling, squeeze the ring. Keep going overhead, squeeze towards the ceiling, squeeze. Try to squeeze on exhales, move the arms on inhale to the new position. You have one more, finish towards the ceiling, bend your elbows, set the ring off to the side. Rest your arms down and hold on to the edges of the roller. Recommit to the head of the arm bones moving back towards the earth. What that will do as your head of your arm bones move back is it'll lift your chest. Work your feet into alignment if they're there, not there already. So that means heels lining up with sitting bones. Lift both heels up, lower both heels, just the heels, heel lift lower. So we're back into working the ankle joint again. In breath, heels up, exhales, heels down. And even here, you can feel an activation through center as you anchor the head of the arm bones to the earth while working with the ankle joint. All right, the next time your heels are lifted, keep them up, breathe. Use your biggest open mouth, ha, exhale. Weight both sides of the pelvis. Lift both feet up at the same time. Stretch your legs up to the sky. Point and flex out of your ankles. Keep the flex. Spread your toes. Open your legs out into a wide V. Close your legs. In breath open. Exhale, close. All right, start watching your legs. How are they doing? Are they both moving out and away from each other at about the same pace? Are they also coming back together about the same pace? Two more. The next time your legs are together, point at the ankles. Let's do a little fast crisscross. So right, Above the pelvis, the legs are alternating one in front and then the other. Super fast crisscross with a strong pointed foot. That extension is coming from a rooted pelvis. So both sides of the pelvis rooted. And then there's the reach from the pelvis all the way out through your toes. One more crisscross. Touch your heels together. I would think of this like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. I don't know if her feet were like this, where her heels were touching, her toes were separate, but squeeze your heels like you just clicked them together and now hold them there. Now squeeze from the inner line of the heels up the inner line of the legs all the way up to the pelvic floor. Can you squeeze the legs together? If your heels are together, your toes will be apart. It, we'll call this Pilates V, that's its official name right, where there's a slight external rotation going on in the legs. Now as you exhale, bend your knees. This is frog. Knees come towards the chest. Heels stay together the whole time. Squeeze the heels, extend the legs. As the legs extend magnetically, strongly, pull the legs together. Knees bend. Heels come towards pelvis. Legs extend. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze as you get the legs fully extended. They're squeezing the whole time. It's just how much it's calibrating on and off. So you have two more of these frogs. All right, you're gonna finish with your knees down, heels touching, all right? Knees down, heels touching. So you're in the, like, you know, the frog position. 
but knees bent. All right, keeping your left heel where it is, extend your right leg out into the side plane. So it's like a Russian dancer kick, right? Foot is flexed, toes are open. As you exhale, bend your right knee, find your left heel, squeeze them. Knees are both bent, you're in the frog position. Extend your left leg out now. So left leg is kicked out like you're in a dance troupe. <laughs> Low to the ground doing those big Russian squat kicks. Left heel touches right heel, squeeze. Let's go again, right leg kicks out. Reach through the inner line of your right leg to your big toe. Hold your right leg, squeeze the heels, get that touch of the heels. Left leg extends and kicks out. Both heels touch. All right, let's do both legs, ready? This would like be the big finale of the dance, right? Both legs would kick out and then both heels touch together. Oh, how are you doing on matching the heels? How are you doing on that? Are they matching well? Are they squeezing when they come in? Are they lining up with the pubic bone when they come in? Or is one foot a little like off? So pay attention, right? Concentration's the first part of this work. Well, breathing, breath is first. Concentration's number two, concentrating on what you're doing. The next time the heels come together, let's put these moves together. So stretch both legs up to the sky. So you've extended your leap frog. This is your mid leap. And then on the exhale, fold your knees, keep the heels together. Let's just kick right, left, right leg kicks, returns, left leg kicks. Hey, hey, when you return, how's the heel meeting? Both legs kick, woohoo. Both heels together, stretch straight up, squeeze the legs, squeeze, 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 squeeze. All right, one more pass through that. Knees fold, hold the heels, hold the heels, hold the heels. Stretch your right leg out, single leg kick. External rotation, foot is flexed at the ankle. Heels meet, left leg extends, side kick, just the left leg. Left heel, right heel meet, squeeze, get that squeeze. And now both legs kick, big kick. Reach, 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 reach from the pelvis to the inner line of the leg, to the arch, to the big toe. Both heels meet. Knees are bent. Stretch your legs up to the sky. Legs are long. Bring the legs into neutral. So you're no longer an external rotation of the legs. Knees are pointing like in the direction of your eyes. Your eyes can clearly see your knees, your ankles, and your toes. Lower your right leg towards the earth. So we're more of in a neutral leg, which would mean the inner line of the right leg as it lowers is reaching to the ground faster than the outer edge. And raise your right leg up. We'll do that two more times. Right leg moving, right leg lowering. Trying to move from the inner line of the leg to the ground first. That'll keep more of a neutral leg versus an external rotation. You have one more lower and you're gonna stay down. When you get down to the ground on this one with the right leg, keep it there. So you're in a big scissor stance, all right? If your right heel can touch the ground, interesting. If not, just float it. Weight both sides of your pelvis, both ankles flex, both ankles point. Keep it going, both ankles flex, both ankles point, all right. Keep the point on both, just change the one in the air to a flex. So you have a point on the right leg, which is on the ground. You have a flex on the left leg. Are you ready to switch it? Switch, woo, and switch. So you're alternating a point flex. One more. Oh, I hope you're able to coordinate this. If you're not, don't get frustrated. Put both feet in a point. Raise the right leg up, keep the right leg up. Flout, uh, flout, <laughs> floint the foot. So somewhere between a point and a flex. Breathe. Strong point out of the left leg now. Lower the left leg towards the earth. So it's gonna break the plane of the roller, which means you'll get a stretch through the front of the hip joint, through the front side of the pelvis on the left side. Raise it up. Let's keep going. Equally weight your pelvis and breathe. You just have one more of these. Right leg is reaching towards the ceiling sweetly. This time as your left leg goes down, keep it there. Keep it on the ground. 
Let's point out of both ankles. Flex out of both ankles. So both ankles doing the same exact thing. Finish on a point on both feet. Let's change the one in the air to a flex. All right, we're gonna alternate, alternate them. Yeah, so while one ankle's pointing, the other one's flexing. Keep it going. Breathe. This is coordination. This is just what the ankle's doing walking anyway, right? It's got a coordinated movement. Finish, point, raise your left leg up. Bend your knees. Let's put the left foot down first, toe down, then heel down. Right foot comes down, toe down first, then heel down. Lift your pelvis, shoot your roller out, lay on your back, stretch your legs out. Wow, that was a big, that was a big sequence. Oh, I feel, what do you feel? I can describe what I feel, but I feel like I got a pelvis that's like settled and a heart that's just open and lifted without much effort, ribs resting back and a head just balanced, like kind of a neutral with a little cervical nod. All right, let's add on. We got more to do, more to do. So for those of you that leave at nine, um, we have about, I don't know, three more minutes till nine. So this next series you'll do with us. And then we'll, those of us that are staying for the bonus 15, um, We'll continue on. So for those of you that head out for work or obligations at nine for a 45 minute class, we'll do mermaid with you. And then after mermaid, you'll be finishing. All right, so come into your mermaid seat, pick your back hip up, lower it down a couple more. This class always makes me hungry. <laughs> All that center work. All right, keep the back hip rooted, reach your arms up. Out to a T, rollers to the uh, side of the front leg and roll out across the roller. I didn't give much description on the seated position, did I? So if sitting in the Z sit does not work for you, you could sit, I'll just, you keep moving. You could sit with your legs crisscrossed, right? You could sit with your legs extended. Here's your last one. All right, let's switch sides. To switch sides, the roller moves and the legs also change position. So if it's Z sit, the roller is on the side of the leg that's to the front. If this is your trickier side, you know, you have these other choices for sitting. You could sit cross-legged. You could also sit like the marquee diamond, that leapfrog shape we took earlier on our backs. You could also sit with legs extended. All of them are, all of them are sweet. In fact, I'd encourage you um, to change up the legs too. When I was teaching those modifications a moment ago, it felt so good to just change the legs. So, you know, as you keep going, you could try what it feels like to do this in crisscross. See what it feels like to do it with legs extended, heels rooted. Finish. All right, open your legs out wide. Press down through the heels, roller in between the legs. As your heels press down and your toes spread, use a knife edged hand, roll out on the roller. Press down on the roller and come back in. Let's do that a couple more times. Okay. If you got to go, have a great day. If you're with us for another 15 minutes, close your legs, bring the roller to the top of the mat, lay down with your shoulder blades on the roller, hands to the base of the skull, knees bent, feet flat on the floor, lay back over your roller, exhale, curl up. So this range of motion of the arch and the curl is yours to figure out.
What I'd love for you to add is when you come up into the flexion, the curl, also scoop your tail in, flex your tail. When you lay back into the arch, give yourself a duck butt and reach your pubic bone to the mat. So the pelvis is going through the arch and the curl too. A couple more times, it's not just the upper back and the head following, it's the lower half of the body enjoying this arch and curl too. All right, let's stay up and we're gonna pulse up for eight, seven, breathe out, four, three, two, one. Keep your right hand at your skull. Take your left hand, reach it on the diagonal past your outer edge of your right knee. Open up your right elbow tip so you lengthen the line from your left pelvis to your right armpit. Breathe to shorten the line from left shoulder to right pelvis. It's a pulse. So here we go. Pulse the left arm beyond the right knee. Reach for it. Shorten the line across the torso. That's the emphasis. Not so much the reach, but the shortening of the line. Bringing left ribs towards right pelvis. Two, one. Left hand to base of the skull. Breathe. Supporting your head with your left hand, take your right arm, reach it across diagonally towards the outer edge of your left knee. Open the line from right pelvis to left shoulder, even move the left elbow back into alignment with the left shoulder. Equally weight your pelvis. To shorten the line from right shoulder to left pelvis, let's pulse. Focus on the pulse, focus on the ribs, getting closer to the left pelvis on every pulse. Is the right arm also reaching beyond the left knee? Yep, sure is. Keep going. Two more. Finish on this one. Hands back to the head, arch and curl. Whole spine and pelvis involved in the arch and the curl. Breathe. One more arch and curl. All right, super nice. Let's lay down on our side over the roller. If you don't like this, you can just lay on your side without the roller. So we're going to bring the roller. I'm not there yet. I've got my hair falling apart. Bring the roller underneath your um, rib cage area, just below the armpit. So it's, it's not in the armpit, it's just below it on the ribs. I would say that's like about the rib area of your chest, about that. All right, stretch your legs out. Legs could be a little forward of the pelvis if you've had some back pain, or legs could be right under the pelvis. Just make sure they're not behind the pelvis. That's, we all tend to do that one, we put them too far back. All right. Stacking the pelvis, the ridge of shoulder, top arm up and over the head, and top arm down to your side. Ooh, how are we doing with this? This is like force and lateral translation of the ribs. Let your head drip down towards your bottom arm. If this bothers your shoulder, your neck in any way, grab a pillow. Either put the pillow underneath the right arm or under in between the head and the neck, or maybe you need two pillows, right? It's a big stretch for me through my neck. Good one. All right, top arm down, bend your top knee, slide your top foot along the length of the bottom leg, kick the leg up to the sky, lower it down. Top leg slides on the bottom leg, stretch it strong up to the ceiling with a long leg, reach out and lower your leg down. One more time, slide up, extend and reach lower down. Let's reverse it. Straight kick up. Bend your knee. Top foot slides along the bottom leg. Do it again. Kick up long, strong. Bend. Toe to inner line of the leg contact. Last one. Reach up. Bend. Extend. All right. Press yourself up. Bend your knees to do that. So knees tuck in. Use your hands. Press up. Ooh, that was nice. Let's go to the other side. Again, 
If you get on this side and you don't like the roller underneath your rib cage area, it's just too much for the neck, the shoulder, it's just like, ugh. Just lay on your side without the roller. You don't even have to use it. No suffering, no suffering. Strength, yes. Feeling like you've used muscles, yes. <laughs> yeah, all that, but not suffering. All right, let's take a minute and line up. So where's the roller? It's not in the armpit. It's just, mm, I don't know, just below the armpit. That would be the right words. Just below the armpit, kind of more in line with your chest. Clearly on the ribs. And if you're not used to having something on your ribs right here, it could be quite the like, wow. If your head doesn't want to go down, get up, get a pillow, tuck it in there really quick between ear and arm, or even put the pillow underneath the armpit. Stack your shoulders, stack your pelvis. So if you're doing all that already, you're awesome. Breathe, just holding the stacked position and keeping the belly of you moving back and up towards the top hip and rib basket. That's good work. All right, top leg, lift it up, lower it. All right, here we go. Slide your top foot on top of your bottom leg. Oh, no, we put it back down. We got to do the arm thing, right? Yeah, let's do the arm thing. Sorry, guys, I got ahead of myself. Top arm up and over your head. Yeah, this gives us, I was like, what's wrong with this? I wasn't feeling like the length yet. So here's the length. So as this arm goes up and over your head, it adds this awesome length through the side waist, side torso, upper side, right? And what's helping that is the roller. It's got this uh, lateral, you know, kind of helping with a lateral translation of the ribs. Keep going. I was just fixing a mic that I think was getting all scratchy. All right, the next time your arm is down, now let's go for the legs. Stack yourself up, slide your top foot up your bottom leg, stretch your leg up to the ceiling. Come on, get a good reach. Reach out to lower it down, breathe. Drag it, you wanna feel the toe to leg contact. Stretch, lower through a reach. You have one more. Oh, these are nice. Okay, we're gonna reverse it. It's just a straight leg kick up, fold, track your foot down the inner line of your bottom leg. Keep it going, breathe. Here's your last one. All right, once your legs are down, Let's flip over onto our bellies. Everybody down onto your bellies. You do not have to use the roller for this. You could uh, just lay on your belly and uh, use your hands to push the earth. We're gonna use the rollers on knife edge hands. Pressing the tops of the feet down, pressing the legs down, squeeze your legs towards one another. Breathe. As you press your arms into the roller, roll the roller towards you to extend your spine up lower back down. So you're using the roller as a prop to help lift you up into a little back bend. In Pilates, we would call this swan. One more time. And then lower down. Place your hands underneath your forehead. Press down through the tops of your feet. Reach out through your right leg and lift it up. Single leg lift. Reaching out through your right leg, return it. Reach, 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 reach. Put it down. Reach long left, keep the reach lift, left leg up, breathe, check in with the shoulders, the neck, what are you doing up there? Hopefully, hopefully you're not gripping to pick the leg up. And then reach out through your left leg and lower down. One more each side, if you are feeling any grip or strain in the neck, what do you do? Decrease range of motion of the leg, breathe. And then tell yourself, soften, you know, neck and shoulders don't have to be the work of taking the leg into the back plane. Lower through a reach, the right leg. Last time, left leg. Plant the right leg on the ground. Anchoring the right, the left leg gets to lengthen to lift. Breathe. And then left leg lengthens to lower. Use your hands. Push up to all fours. Keep rolling the roller back. This one, you don't have to use the roller. You could just kneel on the floor. The roller just makes it harder. But if you don't like, you know, the roller feels funny, it bothers your knees, just don't, don't use it. So um, rollers going underneath the knees on the top of the shin bone. 
Woo, we're pressing the head of the shin bone forward into the roller. Hands are beneath the shoulders, pointer finger and thumb are outer width of shoulders. Point and flex out of the ankles so that you feel that your foot could become a braking system, right? When your toes hit down, like even push into them and you can feel the belly tone on, there's the break. And then when your feet lift, you don't have the braking system coming from the foot. So it's available to you to have a foot connected to the earth through ankle flexion and the toe pushing. For now, see if you can have your feet floating. That'll make it a little harder so that you, you don't get the push to find the break. Now, what's not the break is the neck and shoulders. <laughs> so take a breath. Use a sweet exhale. Step your right leg right back and into the air. Right leg back and into the air. Pulse the right leg up. Four. So it's pulsing up with a long leg. Three, two, one. Hold the right leg up. Draw little circles with the right leg. Big toe. Reverse, remember our circle's about the size of a tennis ball. Push with your hand strongly. On an exhale, fold your right leg, put your right knee down. If you can keep your toes off the ground, interesting, but if you wanna use the braking system of the feet to take it out of your neck so your neck is not doing it, please do, right? So no neck junk. Exhale. On an in-breath, left leg out and up in the air. Breathe. Pulse the left leg up, strong point at the left ankle, pulsing up, feeling the hamstring glute on the left side tone. Last two, last one, tennis ball circle, keep the leg long. Ooh, circles are hard in this shape. <laughs> the reverse, I got a messy circle, how about you? I'd like, I need to smooth that thing out. Two, one, finish, back to all fours. Step your right leg back, leg in the air. Here we go, go for it, left arm forward. You're gonna shake, you're gonna wobble. So you're in cross crawl. Is your left foot on the ground or off the ground? Either way works. Okay, left hand down. Ooh, that was hard to keep the left foot off the ground the whole time for me. It was the first time I did it and talked. Normally once I start talking, I can't do that. Whew, okay, second side. Here we go, left leg back up in the air. Breathe, push with your left hand. Right arm extends forward. I, I'm getting better at this because I can talk through it with my foot that's, ah, now I'm messing up. But you keep going, all right? <laughs> anyway, I can tell I'm getting better. I hope you are too. Arm and leg back to the earth. Tuck your toes, put your feet on the ground. Use your hands and push, use your feet and push. Pick your pelvis up to the sky. So you've come out almost like into like a down dog shape, an inverted V. Use an exhale, bring your knees back to the roller to the earth. We're just gonna do that two more times. Push with your feet, push with your hands. Come up into an upside down V shape. Keep pushing with hands and feet so you open up the tissue of the legs and the spine. On an exhale, fold at the knees. Return your knees to the roller or the floor. Here's your last one. Hands and feet push. That's what gives you the end points to really take the pelvis skyward. Maybe you can land in your heels. It's okay if you don't. Breathe. This is definitely not a down dog, right? It's a shorter V shape. It's a different shape. So two more breaths. What's well, not my version of dog? My version of dog would take up more of this mat. So this is more like a Pilates inverted V. Okay, walk your feet forward, kick that roller, move your hands back, move your roller off to the side, bring your hands to your thigh bones, move your heart forward, in breath and rise. Okay, get your pull. You thought we weren't gonna use the pole. <laughs> we are. We have a little mini pole moment. Move this stuff out so I don't kick it. So you either have a pole or a paddle or a broom or a mop, right? All of them, anything that's like a long stick object. Line up with your feet <clears throat> underneath your pelvis. Hold on to the pole about the width of your shoulders. Pull the pole apart with the hands. Raise your arms up. Lower your arms. Two more. This feels really integrated after all that work. Raise your arms up, bend your knees, keep your sitting bones broad, head of the shin bones moving forward. Tip your spine to the right and to the left. Oh, man. This is gonna make us really good when we get to go to concerts again and like our, one of our favorite songs come on. <laughs> we're, we're like swaying with the crowd. 
All right, let's tip. Okay, listen to me. We're tipped left. I'm tipped left. Tipping left. The top arm, the right arm moves forward. Top arm up. So you've got a lateral, right? A lateral bend, adding rotation. Top arm going down, taking the pull down, taking the pull up to the sky. Top arm takes the pull down. Woo, top arm takes the pull up to the sky. In breath and come up. Exhale, lower your arms. Woo, let's do second side. Raise your arms. Have a seat. A little bit of a squat position. Still lifted through the heart. Breathe. Lateral bend to the right. Keep breathing. Pull the pole apart. The movement's from the top arm. For me, it's my left arm. Descending woo, and lifting. Keep it going. One more. All right, push with your feet, in breath and come up. Exhale, lower your arms. That's pretty sweet through the shoulder girdle, isn't it? Pull in the right hand, right hand forward, left foot forward. So opposite hand and foot forward. Pull in the right hand, left foot forward, right leg back. Float your right leg up. Pulse, keep the pulse, that's gonna keep you busy. Keep pulsing, switch the pole, raise the pole, uh-oh. Lateral bend, keep pulsing. Top arm down, top arm up. Oh my gosh, it's coordination. <laughs> oh my gosh, one more, top arm down. Top arm up, all right, torso on top. Knee up, breathe, extend your leg, bend your knee, touch down, lower your arms. All right, no surprises because you already did it on the first side. Here comes the second, pull into the left hand, left arm forward, right foot forward. So opposite foot and arm are forward, left leg back. Pull in the left hand, left arm forward. Right leg forward, left leg back. Weight shift, here comes our little pulse. Yep, you gotta keep the pulse going the whole time. That's got its own little rhythm. Yeah, switch to holding the pole into both hands. Raise your arms up. Oh, it's gonna get crazy, you know it. Lateral bend to the right, it's the top arm, it dips and returns. Meanwhile, you got the pulse going. Dip, I always lose the pulse as I try to dip and talk. <laughs> One more, dip and lift. All right, torso upright, knee up in the front plane. Come on, extend your leg, lower it down. You did great. Always got to give like a crazy challenge, right? Bend your knees, bring your pole to your thighs. Roll your pole down your legs, down your knees, down your shins. Roll it down your legs till it lands on the ground. Then bring your hands to your thigh bones, round your spine like a cat, tuck your tail, drop your head, lift your belly. Let your upper back arch. I'm sorry, that would be flex. And then now go into an arch where tail sticks out, heart pulls forward. So it's cat cow in a squat. Let's do one more cat. Drop your head, drop your tail. Push your hands onto your thigh bones to help open your upper back. Let your head drop. Breathe. Stick your butt out. Pull your heart forward. Look up. Widen through your collarbone. All right, come to neutral. Reach out big. Stand up large. Take up a lot of space now as you open your arms out. Let your arms dangle. Stand and feel yourself, vibrant, alive. Enjoy.